What's going on guys, it's your boy M4H here and today we're going to go over some tips, tricks and how to's on the SCUF Infinity Pro controller. So let's get started. Easy go. Alright guys, so what I want to go over today is some different things with the SCUF controller that you can do that a lot of people might not know about. Uh, you might be familiar with some of them, you might not. So I'm just going to go over the basics of the controller to kind of give you guys an idea on how to fix lag issues, joystick issues, button issues, and things of that nature. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you guys the your paddles in the back here. They're super easy to remove. If you don't know how to remove them, if you break one on accident or anything like that and need to replace it, all you're going to do is just push them up on the bottom. kind of hard to move and then you want to twist it until it pops off and that's about it and then all you have to do to put it back on is you're just going to want to stick it all the way in and rotate it down until it clicks back in and then you want to push down on it until you hear it pop back in space and then as you can see in here your button works again so easy thing not a lot of people it's kind of scary at first when I first popped it off I was kind of worried about breaking it but it's not too bad and it's actually pretty easy another thing if you're experiencing lag of any type on your controller um, one trick that maybe you know maybe you don't is every PlayStation controller actually has a reset button on it so all you're gonna do is with your light being on right here on your L2 side there's a hole and all you're gonna do is take a pin and you're just gonna press in that hole until your controller turns off hold it for a couple seconds and then let go and that's going to completely reset the controller back to what it should be and then you go ahead and you just turn it back on and now your controller is reset you shouldn't experience any lag between your controller and your PlayStation now and you should be good to go the next thing I want to go over is your joysticks these are very easy to replace uh, if you don't like the concave then you want to switch to dome if you want to get them higher or lower really easy to change all you gotta do is get the tool that they sent go ahead and pop it on actually I have to take off my fade grips awesome awesome things uh, if you're interested check them out go to fadegrips.store uh, you can use promo code team350 to get 25 or actually it's 30 percent off your entire order so what you do you go ahead and take this tool Slip it down on over and turn it counterclockwise until your ring comes off. And then you can go ahead and pull the ring completely off. And then you're just going to want to rotate your controller down a little bit and pull up on it. And it should pop right out. And then the hardest part is actually getting them back on. They're a pain in the butt sometimes, but you kind of just got to line them up and then kind of click them down in until it resets back to where it was. And then you set your ring back on, put your piece back on, and turn it clockwise until it clicks down in. And then your joystick is back and good to go. Now, a thing I learned from Scuff is if you're experiencing any run issues or any lag coming from your actual joystick, the easiest way to reset it is you're going to want to depress it and hold it for 30 seconds. And then while you're holding it, you want to go up rotate it clockwise one revolution and then counterclockwise run revolution bring it back to center and then let go and that'll actually reset your joysticks N didn't really know that but uh, after talking with scuff when we had a broken controller they told us that we tried it it didn't actually work but uh, so we had to send the controller back to repair so that's one thing I never knew and I don't know how many of you guys know it but it's a pretty cool feature if you're experiencing any issues with your actual joystick. Now the one other thing to show you guys um, is hair triggers. If you have the Infinity Pro and you got the hair triggers, there's an easy way to actually set these up. Um, you have to do it in game so you don't break them. But you just want to kind of go into like Call of Duty or any first person shooter. And you don't want to have any bots or anything on because you don't want people shooting at you while you're trying to do it. And then you want to start your game. And then you got these little rotation things in the back, and these aren't actually your hair triggers. 
those are just button stoppers to change your depress on your actual thing. So you want to make sure those are both turned up when you do this. And then pull your piece out here. And then you want to actually take off your extended triggers or your regular triggers by pulling up on them and then pressing down and then twisting them off until they both come off. And then you'll notice in the top of your controller, there are two holes on each of your L2 and R2 button for this key. You want to go ahead and put that key down into the hole, all the way in, until it stops. And then once your game loads, you're going to want to set your hair triggers using this key only. Team Deathmatch. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your gun, and then I wait for my match to begin here. On the battlefield. And then what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to turn this key clockwise until your gun starts shooting automatically without you depressing the button. So I'm just going to slowly turn it here. And as you can see, I'm close, so I want to just keep turning it. And as you can see, my gun is automatically firing without me touching it. So once you get there, you want to take your key wherever it's at and turn it back one quarter of a turn. And your gun should stop firing. So now as soon as you touch your trigger, it's very easy for your gun to shoot. And you're going to want to do that on both sides. So once you go to your other side and put your key in here you're gonna to want to turn it until your gun starts aiming by itself and sometimes it's a little touchy so you just have to keep going and as you can see now the gun is automatically aiming itself so then like I said you want to back it up a quarter turn until it stops and now both of your hair triggers are set for any FPS games. You barely touch them and you're going. Now if you get into a game and you can't move forward, I had this issue with Modern Warfare 3 Remastered, or Modern Warfare Remastered um, back when Advanced Warfare came out. And I got stuck at a lock screen. I couldn't move. None of my buttons worked. It's actually because your hair triggers are too tight. So if that's the case, you're going to want to go back in and loosen them both up and that will actually resolve that issue. And then the one other thing that I want to just let you guys know is um, the remapping. Uh, I don't know. It's really easy to remap the buttons for your triggers in the back. Minor jump, and this one's the melee button because I had it set up for Fortnite. Overdrive, good to go. So all you're going to want to do is you're going to take your remap key and you're going to put it on the back of your controller. And you're going to want to hold it there. And then whatever button you want to use so I want this button to be my crouch button. So you're just going to hold that in and then you're going to depress whatever button you want to map it to. And that's not the right button. So I'm going to let go. I'm going to hold it in again and then I'm going to hold in circle. And then I'm going to let go of circle, let go of the button and then take off the key. So now it should be able to, when I move, I should be able to hold that trigger and my guy slides now. Or if I'm standing, I can go ahead and prone, look up, and then my other button, my jump. So that's about it for this, guys. Uh, if you have any other questions about the scuff, uh, feel free to let us know. Shoot us an email, team350gaming at gmail.com, if you have any other questions. Uh, if anybody has Astro A50s, like myself, I actually have a tutorial video on our YouTube channel as well on how to update them, change your EQ presets and all that. And if you also have the A50s with the Slim and you're trying to stream, I also have a tutorial video on how to set that up as well because it took me a quite a while to figure out how to do it after going through Elgato and Astro. So um, I can put the links to those below in the description as well. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, let us know. And thanks for watching, guys.